Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. Every week, we celebrate our supporters through shout-outs and personal birthday messages. We think this is also a fun way for us to hear about all the amazing places that you, our listeners, come from. Hello to Kamaya, who lives in Emerald in Australia. Happy belated birthday to Celine, who turned six on May 16th. Happy belated birthday to Abigail Joy Quinn, the Bunny Queen from Melbourne, Australia, who turned seven on May 17th. Happy belated seventh birthday to Ender in Scottsdale, Arizona on May 17th. Mommy, Daddy, Dominic, and Seven love you so much and are so proud of you. You are such a sweet son and a wonderful guy. Happy belated ninth birthday to London from Vacaville, California on May 19th. Your mommy, daddy, and little sister Celeste love you so much. Stay creative, smart, and kind like Bernice. Happy belated 11th birthday to Aaron from Tullabody, Scotland, UK, from your mom, dad, your dad, your nephew Joshua, and all the family who all love you so much. Happy belated birthday to Emmeline, who turned 10 on May 19th. Mom, Tyler, and Otis love you so much. Happy birthday to Chloe. Love mommy, daddy, Ellie, Sherlock, and DeWalt, who wish you a birthday as magical as you and an amazing unicorn party. Happy eighth birthday, Ollie. Love mom, dad, and Amelie. We are so proud of you and love you this much. Happy birthday to Cora Alexandra Gilbert, who is turning seven on May 20th. Mama loves you more than anything in the world. You are her smart, funny, kind, boppy bear. Happy birthday to Florian Uma Kukiara from Sydney, Australia, who just turned four. Happy sixth birthday to Savina, with all the love from Nanny, Mama, and Choo Choo on May 21st. And happy birthday to Yael, who is turning five on May 26th. Mommy, Daddy, Peony, and Pip love you so much. Happy birthday to you all. To reserve your special shout out, please visit sleeptightstories.org slash support. We can't wait to celebrate with you. Now, on to our story. Puddles and Splash are back with a new adventure. Things have been quiet on the Hampshire farm, and Puddles and Splash like that. After letting the animals out for the day, they get ready to take their walk around the farm and fields before joining Farmer Vernon to fix some fences. As they head over to the farmhouse to see what Farmer Vernon left as a treat for puddles, they find a surprise in the garden. Puddles meets Stinky the Skunk. The sun just started to peek over the horizon at Hampshire Farm, signaling the start of yet another perfect day. The animals on Farmer Vernon's farm began to wake up. The cows were stretching and mooing, the chickens softly clucking, and the pigs snuffling and oinking. Even the spiders started to scurry from their corners to try and bask in the rising sun. It was early, but with another sunny day, many of the animals would be excited to get outside and maybe play a game of ball. Why hasn't Chester announced that it's time to wake up and start the day? One of the little piglets oinked. Yeah, maybe I should stand up and tell everyone to get up, another grunted. I'm sure I could do that job. No one would hear your soft little grunts. A chicken jokingly clucked. Give Chester a chance. There is no way that he will let Splash the dog come in to wake us all up. Before another young farm animal could complain, 
Chester, the old rooster, announced the start of the day with a cock a doodle doo. Time to wake up, everyone. He clucked loudly. It's going to be another scorcher of a day. I can feel it in my bones. All the animals, young and old, started to line up to get ready to go out the big barn door. It was Splash, the big farm dog's responsibility to open it. And afterwards, he and Puddles, the young and curious pig, would tend to their daily chores. With a creak and a squeak, the barn door swung wide, bringing with it the fresh smells of morning. Dew-covered grass, blooming wildflowers, the earthy smell of damp soil, and the faint, sweet aroma of hay from the nearby field filled the barn, mixing with the comforting, familiar smells of the animals inside. Just smell the morning, one of the old cows mooed. One of my favorite smells, another replied. I smell something stinky, a piglet oinked. Yeah, me too, and I think it's you, a chicken clucked with a laugh. All right, you all know the drill. Big animals out first. We don't need any cows making pancakes out of the smaller animals, barked Splash. They can't flatten me, clucked one of the chickens flapping her wings and trying to dart ahead of the cows. I'm a bird. I can just fly over them. Hold your horses, Chester the rooster crowed from his perch on a bale of hay. You fly about as well as a cow in a tutu. The chicken, a bit deflated, shot back. Clearly, you've never heard about the chicken who crossed the road to avoid the cows. She flew. As the chickens and pigs waited, the cows leaped and bolted out the barn door like they were on a mission to catch the last slice of pie. They made a beeline for their favorite big blue ball on the field. Next, the chickens flapped out, followed by the pigs, with Puddles, Splash's helper, leading the way. The chickens clustered near the barn, eagerly pecking at the seeds Farmer Vernon had scattered. At the same time, the pigs gathered around the water trough, slurping noisily. The cows were already at the far end of the nearby field, enthusiastically playing their own wacky version of football. Most of the animals are out of the barn splash, Puddles told the big farm dog. What are we doing today? Though Puddles was just a small piglet, he was so smart and capable that he proved invaluable to both Splash and Farmer Vernon. Well, let's first take a walk around the farm and make sure everything is on the up and up. I smelled a scent this morning that hasn't crossed my nose in a while, and a walk might also do us some good. Later, I think we may need to help Farmer Vernon repair some of the back fences. It's going to be a hot day today, so make sure you are drinking lots of water. Sounds perfect, Puddles, always the optimist said as they started their patrol. They usually first walked around the nearby buildings and then followed along the trails that ringed the first few fields. Let's walk by the farmhouse before we walk the fields. Farmer Vernon may have left you a morning treat, and we can check out the new flower and vegetable garden that Mrs. Vernon planted just last week, Splash said, as he led Puddles towards the house. Farmer Vernon left me a treat? Puddles said, as a great big smile formed on his snout. Don't let it go to your head. I said he shouldn't spoil you, but he has taken a liking to you, and well, he makes the rules. Puddles trotted eagerly beside Splash, his little tail wiggling with excitement. I can't wait to see what Farmer Vernon left for me today. Do you think it's apples? I love apples, but I also love fresh turnips and parsnips. They taste nice too. Splash chuckled his tail wagging in sync with Puddle's enthusiasm. We'll find out soon enough, 
but we should take a peek at Mrs. Vernon's garden first. I smell something stinky. As they rounded the corner of the farmhouse, they stopped in their tracks. The garden looked like it had hosted an overnight dance party for dirt lovers. Flowers were uprooted, vegetables were scattered, and mysterious little holes were everywhere. Oh no, Puddles exclaimed, his eyes wide. What happened here? It looks like the cows played football in the garden, except they would never do that. Splash sniffed the air, his nose twitching. Something smells fishy, and not in a good way. It smells like trouble. Puddles wiggled his snout towards a particularly large hole. Do you think it was the rabbits having a midnight snack? Or maybe the moles threw a garden party and forgot to clean up? It's not the raccoons or foxes, is it? They promised not to cause problems on the farm anymore. Splash shook his head, still sniffing. Nope, this is different. I've got a sneaky suspicion. Let's follow our noses and see where this trail leads. Puddles leaned in closer to a half-chewed tomato plant. Whoever did this has terrible table manners. Splash nodded and a powerful perfume. Let's keep our eyes and ears open, Puddles. We're on the case. Together they set off, ready to uncover the mystery of the Garden Raider, with Puddles hoping he'd still get his morning treat after solving the case. As they followed the trail of overturned plants and half-chewed vegetables, Splash's nose led them towards the garden's edge, where a small hole under the fence suggested an intruder. I've got a feeling it was a skunk, Puddles, Splash said, sniffing the air again. They mostly come out at night, but this one must not have learned the rules yet. Skunks usually eat insects, fruits, berries, and occasionally vegetation making nighttime the perfect time to dig around gardens and lawns in search of food. This skunk does not yet understand that we don't do so much damage and only take what we need. Puddles looked around nervously. A skunk? Oh no, Splash, what if he sprays us? Splash chuckled. Don't worry, Puddles, we'll approach him carefully. Let's find where he's hiding and have a little chat. They followed the trail to a thicket near the barn, where Splash's nose led them to a burrow hidden among the roots of an old tree. Puddles peered into the dark hole, his snout twitching. Do you think he's in there? Puddles whispered, his eyes wide. Splash sniffed the entrance and shook his head. I don't smell anything fresh. It looks like we missed him, but he can't be too far. Let's keep searching. As they continued their search, they checked under the porch, behind the tool shed, and even in the hayloft, but there was no sign of a skunk. Puddle sighed. This skunk is really good at hiding. Do you think we'll ever find him? Splash nodded confidently. We will, Puddles. We just need to be patient. Skunks usually come out at night. We can stand guard tonight and see if we can catch him then. Puddles perked up at the idea. I get to stay up late? That sounds exciting. But what about my treat? Do you think it's still there? Splash sighed. You certainly love your treats, but... I suppose you will need your energy for later. Let's go check. After eating his treat, a juicy red apple, which he shared with Splash, they continued their patrol and then spent the afternoon helping Farmer Vernon fix the fence in one of the back fields. That night, Puddles and Splash met again after dinner at the farmhouse. 
Are you sure you are up to waiting for the skunk? It might be late before he makes his way over here again, and we still need to be up early in the morning, Splash said to Puddles. I'm ready and could stay up all night if I had to. Puddles was excited about staying up late for the first time. All right then, why don't you take the first watch and then I will take the second. Now remember, don't get upset at the skunk or scare it. The consequences might be rather smelly, Splash said, trying to urge Puddles to be cautious. Puddles nodded, his eyes wide with determination. Got it, Splash. I'll be careful. The sun set and the farm grew quiet. Puddles took his position near the garden, ears perked and eyes scanning the darkness. Time seemed to crawl by. And when Puddle started to feel sleepy, he heard a faint rustling in the bushes. He perked up and saw a small black and white figure emerge. Hey, who's there? Puddles called out softly, trying not to scare the visitor. The figure stopped and turned towards him. It's me, Stinky. What do you want? Puddles took a deep breath and stepped forward. Hi, Stinky. Nice to meet you. My name is Puddles, and with Splash, I help look after Farmer Vernon's farm. We need to talk. You've been causing a lot of trouble in Mrs. Vernon's garden. You can't dig up all the flowers and vegetables like that. Stinky bristled. I was hungry. What's a skunk supposed to do? Puddles tried to stay calm. We get that you're hungry, but there are rules on the farm. We all share and take only what we need. That way, there's enough for everyone, and we don't make a mess. Mrs. Vernon worked hard on this garden, and now it's in terrible shape. Stinky sniffed and looked away. I didn't mean to cause problems. I just didn't know where else to find food. Puddles softened. I understand, but if you ruin the garden, there won't be any food left for anyone, including you. We can help you find places to forage without causing damage. Stinky's tail drooped. I guess I didn't think about it that way. Puddles nodded. We must all work together and respect each other's spaces. We take only what we need but we don't waste or destroy. It makes the farm a happy place for everyone. Stinky looked up, his eyes a little less defensive. I didn't mean any harm. I'll be more careful from now on, I promise. Puddles smiled. Thanks, Stinky, we appreciate it. And if you ever need help finding food, just ask. We're all part of the same farm family. Just then, Splash appeared having heard the conversation from his hiding spot. Well said, Puddles. And Stinky, we're glad to have you around, but we all need to follow the rules. Stinky nodded, a small smile creeping onto his face. Thanks, Splash. I'll do my best. As Stinky waddled off to the far field where Splash had told him there were plenty of juicy grubs to dig up, Puddles let out a huge, giggly yawn. I'm glad we were able to solve this problem so that everyone is happy and there were no smelly disasters. But boy, I think I really need to hit the hay. Good night, Splash. Splash chuckled. Good night, Puddles. And that is the end of the story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>